Well, hello everybody and welcome again to one of my live streams. Now, today what I'm going to be doing is showing some of the techniques I'm working on wood. Okay, so now the idea is going to be there's all the different techniques working on the detail, the depth of the wood, and trying to get that shape within the wood as well. So stay tuned as well. So on the end of this video today, on the roughly about 20 minutes, I'm going to show you one of my special tricks to add those extra highlights to kind of wood effect. Okay, so let's make a start and see what we can do. So I'm just going to look at my tablet a minute so we can just see what we're doing. And uh, here we go. Right. So say hello. I'd like to kind of know who you are and where you're from. But also, especially, let me know what the time is where you are. Because at the moment, I'm just looking at my watch here. It's now three minutes past seven. So it's actually not too late. But, you know, this is three minutes past seven in the evening. So what time is it where you are? Let me know. I'll be very interested to find out. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start thinking about the layers. I'm going to want to pick out some of the details on the photo. So I'm just looking at what we've got here. So when you look at the, um, so the actual photograph as well, which is this one here. So this is the main photograph you're looking at at the moment. So that's a detail on the wood I'm going to try and recreate on there. So I'm back to the painting again. So I want to look at the shapes that we've got in here as well. Quite a lot of shapes actually within the wood. The thing about wood as well, which I use to say to everybody as well, is that every piece of wood is different. And because of that, it doesn't matter if you spent it kind of paint it a little bit different to the original one. So, you know, you can make up your own wood. <laughs> That's the beauty about it, it really is. So go with the flow and just have a bit of fun with it when you're painting wood. That's what I tend to do. So I'm using my double zero brush. So it's a very fine detailed brush. I want to fill in this area around the back of the claw here as well. Now, any comments, please leave your comments below because I would love to hear from you. But any questions or comments, what I'll do, I'll go through these at the end of the session, near the end of the session, for any comments you've, you've made. And I'll do my best to answer any questions that you've got, okay? So again, hang on to the end, put, post your comment in there, and I'll uh, quickly run through them for you whilst I'm live on air. Hello, live, it's me, hiya. So looking at the details now, now the central one, uh, we've got an extra piece at the top there. Again, it doesn't have to be precise to the actual photo itself. So I'm not too worried about that. So I'm gonna have a look just down there and around the side. Okay. Just a few more down there as well. And to there. I'm trying to pick out all the finer details. Now this is like a, a mid-tone layer. And what I tend to say to my um, my patrons, you know, patron.com, just have a look down the bottom corner there. Look. <laughs> um, I say to them on there that when I'm painting wood, it's actually handy if you've got a bit of a shaky hand because trying to work on all the detail, I'm going to extend this across under there, by the way. So it looks like the claw is actually sat on something properly. So it's going to come down to here, just make it a little bit different, a bit shaky, a bit jagged on purpose, just so we've got a bit more texture in there. And a few more down the side. I might just bring an extra piece around there as well. So this is a Carolina Wren. It's a little bit different to the to the Wrens here in Europe, you know, especially the ones here in the UK. Um, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe the Carolina Wren is a little bit bigger than ours here in the UK. It's a bit larger. And also, it's um, got slightly different markings. I've painted a lot of wrens over the time. And uh, this particular one's got some different markings on it. So I'm just going to go to uh, Facebook. I'm going to make sure that I am live on there. I think I am. So if you post a comment, just let me know that you can see me. Otherwise, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Which is not ideal. Okay. Right, so now I'm going to add some more details down the side. I'm going to go for a mixture of burnt umber and lamp black. Just down the side here. Well, I've got three people watching at the moment, so any more than that would be great. <laughs> right, okay. So again, I want to pick out the shapes within the wood 
Now I'm looking carefully at the photograph again. See what I might do, I'll just uh, zoom in a little bit so you can just see what I'm doing, just to make it a bit easier on the eye. So if I just move that up a touch on the pad, make sure you can see it. Probably to about there, I think. That's it. Okay. That's better. Okay, right. Now this is more of a, a milky consistency mix at the moment. I say it's a mixture of lamp black and burnt umber. That's all it is. And I'm thinking about, I say, where the shapes are in the wood here. Again, I'm not trying to kind of slavishly copy the photograph itself, but I want to get it similar to what I see on the photo, just so it's a little bit similar where the darks and the lights are. You know, and as with watercolours, we all know with watercolours, you've got to start off light and get darker as you go along. All right. So start off light and gradually get darker. Now I'm thinking about a shape in here. So this is going to be set back in there a little bit. And within this section, we've got a few odd little lines coming down. That's another section of wood there. It's a bit bluey, kind of bluey black on the side as well. So I'm going to try and recreate that as I go along. Okay. And then to the side here. Just lightly jiggering it as I go along. Now, if I don't answer any comments later on, it's because I can't see any comments on the screen for some reason at the moment. I will have a look shortly whilst I'm talking to you. So it's all new to me. All this live business. <laughs> if anybody else has been live as well at some point on the um, on the internet, let me know. I'd like to hear from you as well to see how you go on, you know, to find out how well you found it. Because you can do it from your mobile phone. I've actually got um, two webcams on the go, so obviously this one here and the one looking at my palette there. And using a little bit of software at the same time on the laptop, just to ensure that we can look at the details. So it's not too bad, a little bit flickery, but it's not too bad. So again, what I want to do is pick out some of the sections in here. I don't want it to be perfect, so I really don't. But the beauty about wood as well is that you can use all sorts of methods. You can use the fine tip of your brush. You can go thin, you can press on harder, go thicker, give it a light shake as you come away. And you can also get a brush and you can flick the paint on the paper as well. I would get some paper around the outside of this hole first, okay? So you don't splatter everywhere else. So that is a splattering technique which you can use as well. To create extra texture on the wood, which is really, really useful. Now the paints I'm using, out of interest, are Windsor & Newton. So they're the ones I've got here. And I'm just trying to see. Yeah, so Windsor & Newton paints. And the um, the brushes I've got, this is a Cotsman Series 111. It's quite a nice brush actually as well. I do like this particular brush. So it's going to go onto my Facebook. So Cotman Series 111. Ah, that's better. Try and create the extra texture. So as with watercolours, we all know, is that you've got to start light, then you gradually build your way dark as you go along. Whereas if you're using acrylics or oil paints or anything like that, obviously you can go, you can put light on dark and vice versa. But with watercolours, because it is, as it states, water at the end of the day, you do have to start off quite, quite thin on there. You really do. So start off light and build your way up because you've got to, the white of the paper shining through is the idea. So that's the way it tends to work. Some paints are opaque. Some paints are, most of the paints are either semi-opaque or, or transparent or semi-transparent. So that's the kind of, uh, kind of paints you get. So it's well worth if have a look on the, uh, the manufacturer's chart for your particular paints and see which ones you've got and find out what they say for the particular, the same one that you're using at the moment. For example, I printed off, I haven't got it on me at the moment, but I'll show you one of the evenings, is a chart on how that works. So bear with me a minute. Yeah, so it's a chart on how that works. So you can look at the chart, look at the opacity, the transparency, the permanence rating. So how good is it in daylight? You know, does it fade? <laughs> oh, hello, Sue, 10 minutes late. That's okay, don't worry. Oh, that's it, people can see me now. I'm finally getting some comments. Hello, everybody. I've only got two people on at the moment for some odd reason, I don't know why. 
Maybe it's not showing up quite as well as it should do. But no idea. But I'll try and keep make sure this saves on uh, on Facebook anyway. And if people want to see more of a bit of live painting on a cool, cool Wednesday evening, then uh, please let me know because I'll be interested in some more for you. Now I'm looking towards the top part of the wood, just around here, just there, and then bring it all the way down to the bottom. Now remember one other thing as well, is that if you're watching this on catch up, so it's not live anymore, but it's broadcast obviously live, still leave a comment, I'd love to hear from you, because I will check it, I do get the notifications on people's comments, so I do check them. Anybody that follows my Facebook page on a regular basis will know that I do reply to just about, <laughs> when I can, to just about every comment I can. Sometimes I can't, but most of the time I tend to reply to uh, as many comments as possible when I'm on the internet, okay? So please leave a comment if you're watching this on catch up. So again, I'm looking for the darker areas. So we've got a section coming around here actually, and just again looking kind of carefully at the photograph. The thing about the photograph as well, it's a very detailed photo. So that enables me to zoom in. So I can really zoom into the photograph itself and look at all the detail within that. And as you know, I'm one for detail. And because of that, I tend to look at the detail minutely. I look really close in at the photograph and see what I can see. And I can lose myself in these, especially when uh, I start to paint in the eye using the very tip of this uh, this tiny brush. When you think probably, as a guess, I'd say maybe about 80% of the painting is painted with this brush. Probably about 70, 80%, something like that. Quite a lot. So all I'm really doing, as I say, is working on the details going around the outside, picking out the sections here and there, just a few. It's a bit of a kind of dark area around there as well, actually. I'm going to try and squeeze that one in the bottom. I think you can just about see that one on the camera behind my logo. <laughs> now, if you're interested in painting wood as well, I have a little bit of a sell, but, you know, I have to do it. Um, on my Patreon site just down here, have a look on there, and I have a lot of tutorials on where birds are on trees and branches and all sorts of things for wood painting. And I have got a tutorial, I'm not going to say what it is yet, coming up soon, soon, next month actually, which involves painting wood as well. Um, so that's going to be quite an interesting one, actually, and see what people say about that. But I'm not going to say anything more than that. I've given it enough away as it is. <laughs> so don't ask, please don't ask. No! Right, so now I want to get darker, just to here. So again, I'm using Lamp Black and Burnt Umber at the moment. So I just want to thicken it down. So I'm going to wash my brush out a minute, get my hand in front of the camera. Now I've got an old acrylic brush which I use for mixing and for grabbing paint out of my half pans. So that's what I'm going to use. Just to there. As I said, if you have any questions, please post them down below. I will have a look at this before I end the broadcast. So this is lamp black. I want this to be it's more to a creamy consistency this time around. So lamp black, squidge that off the end of the brush. Now you can see why I use an old brush. One little tip as well, I do like to say is don't use your best brushes for mixing the paint. Use an old brush like I've got here. I mean, this particular one is so old, as you probably see here, even the paints come off the handle. Okay, that's how old it is. And I just use it solely for mixing with. That's all I do. Use it for anything else just to mix my paints. That way, when you've got all these fine, lovely tips on your sable brushes and you know synthetic brushes, which I have here, you don't want to ruin those very sharp little tips on there. So a little bit of burnt umber in there as well. But say I want this to more of a creamy consistency. Okay, it's about there. I'm going to give it another five minutes of painting, all right? And we'll see how things go. Right, so that's that. Okay, so back to the double zero brush, and we'll see what else we can do. You ready? Right, okay, here we go. Right, so, just load my brush up a little bit there. Now I'm looking for the really dark, so the darkest of dark. So underneath the foot here, 
try and zoom into my photograph a little bit. Again, that's why I've got a very large photo, so I can really zoom into the details. We've got a claw down there. I'm going to hide that for now, but I will highlight that out afterwards as well. We really will. Just kind of pick out the details just that little bit. Um, what else we got? So we've got this one here. It's going to be dark around there as well. Just underneath the foot. So this is a, as I mentioned, Carolina Wren. It's a really lovely photograph. And this is, excuse me, shaking the camera a minute, which is the, uh, well, sorry, I can't even pronounce it, Shenandoah National Park. If anybody knows that one over there. And if I said it wrong, I do apologise. My English is not very good, even though I am English. <laughs> okay, so we've got more darts coming down the middle here. I want to make it a little bit different to what's on the photograph because it's a little bit too dark on the photo. But I do want to make sure that certain parts of this do stand out as well. Now, when I painted this particular wren, I was working on this one today, and um, the colours I've used, just out of interest, if anybody's interested in knowing, is for this colour here on the belly is a raw sienna. Okay, it's got raw sienna. I've got a um, little bit of burnt umber. I've also got what else I've got on there? Burnt sienna as well. Within that. Oh, it's those some lovely colours. And the top, the actual back is very similar colours again, but in a stronger mix. So a very strong mix. And leaving a little bit of uh, cadmium orange in there as well, which is quite nice. So I'm just going to bring this one down here. Oh, I just, just remembered as well. If anybody's interested, by the way, if you fancy having a go at a free video tutorial by me, because anybody that knows me, obviously, I've got the Patreon site, as you know, down there. I've um, got a lot of people on there now who uh, follow my video tutorials. Um, and I've got a free one. There's no, you have to sign up for anything for it. There's no signature or anything for it. So if you fancy having a go at it, just pop onto my Patreon channel down below. Have a look for the free section and uh, just have a go at it. I've put the outline drawing on there, the reference photograph. It's all yours. Have a play. And if you do the painting and you want to sell it, you sell it. Your nice little mention would be lovely, but that's entirely your choice, okay? So a little freebie, freebie from me to you. <laughs> so that's it. Okay. Uh, oh, and I nearly forgot as well, if you're interested as well. My website, which is devonartist.co.uk. So devonartist.co.uk. If you go on the newsletter, sign up for the newsletter, you get a free written PDF guide on how to paint a particular bird, which I've painted, okay? So there you go. Right, that's back to that. That's enough of that now. So again, I'm scumbling, I'm using a shaky hand, looking at the details, and I've got literally, what time is it? Well, I should be finishing now, it's at about 20 minutes, which is long enough normally. I'm gonna do one little thing, which is what I said at the beginning. I'm gonna show you something which I do for just about every painting I paint nowadays, just to give that extra sparkle at the end. I still need to finish this one off, off camera, which I will do. I'll just show you what that is. All it simply is, always wash your brush out in the dirty and in the clean, watercolour white. Now, this is a bit of a thing that not everybody likes to go by. I do because I think it's a nice thing to use. So watercolour white is very similar, in a way, to white gouache. And you can see I'm just putting it in my, my um, ceramic palette there. I prefer ceramic, by the way rather than plastic. There are reasons. If you want to know why, post a comment down below and I'll let you know. Um, so, yeah, because obviously a lot of people tend to use gouache white or they use, um, even acrylic white can be used. Well, I used to use acrylic white for highlighting. Now I'm going to mix this. This is my little tip for you, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Is to mix it to like a creamy consistency. I think you can just about see it on the camera there. So drag your brush through it, give it a mix, and then gently roll the brush away to get a nice point. I'll show it so you can see it on the camera. So roll the brush and pull away to get a nice point on there. Now this, back to the painting, will act as a little highlight. And this is how I've got the highlights on the wren, using the very, very tip of the brush. But the reason why I tend to roll it away from the palette is because you get a nice fine tip. And if it's still too much on there, get yourself a tissue. Just lightly dab it once onto the tissue just taking a residual paint off the tip of the brush. Otherwise, you'll end up with a big blob on there, which you obviously don't want, okay? 
So and then you just tickle this over the highlighted area. So where you think the sun is hitting this piece of wood, which is from this side here, all right, so it's coming from there down, okay? That's where the sun's hitting it. So that's where the highlight's gonna be on this side of the wood. Right, so there you are. Right, so that'll give you some ideas on my little special tip, which I tell all my patrons, on my patron site down below, on how to use it. Now, if you want any uh, questions answered, please post them down below, as I mentioned. I will be on here, I will be checking this, uh, this feed after it's gone live, and after it's actually finished, should I say. And I will do my best, as I said earlier on, to answer any questions you've got. And really, up until then, I'll see you again very soon. All right. So uh, should we do the same again next week? Oh, actually, I'll tell you what, that's another question, isn't it? Post down below. I know, but post down below. and Let me know if you want me to go live again next Wednesday for the same time. the 7 p.m. UK time. So until then, bye-bye for now. And uh, don't forget, keep them brushes wet.